Hi everyone, this is Ty2903 back again here to show you how to set up your first mission in Dynamic Campaign Generator. If you watched the video before, we covered how to download and install all the applications needed to run the mod and walked you through the setup process and selecting some of the settings. And so after you completed that, that would take you right here to this page where you get to pick what nation you play as. You pull this drop down menu down, you see we have UK, United States, Soviet Union, Germany, Japan, Italy, and North Korea for the Korean campaign after World War II. I typically don't mess with this one, I like staying with World War II. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off by creating a mission. I think I'll start off with Germany, and let's do the Battle of France, very beginning of the war. And uh, our computer, the person we'll be playing against, is going to be United Kingdom. And basically what we have here is the uh, calendar. This is basically when this conflict happened, when Germany was in France fighting against the UK. That started on May the 10th and went through the month of June, all the way through June 22nd. So where I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the very beginning, May 10th and then I'm gonna select the operation you wanna play basically there's a there'll be a couple different random ones that are always gonna be there there's sometimes a special operations one sometimes there's historical ones uh, just kinda of depends on when you chose to play so I'm gonna choose the random 4x3 this means there'll be your random maps and a 4x3 uh, setup and a square box setup 4x3 now uh, you'll see that a little bit more what that looks like when I get to the operation page. So uh, right now I'm going to start a new campaign as Germany and the theater of France against the United Kingdom in 1940 of May. So let's start that. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this to help you see. Uh, this is our procurement or buy menu. And what we have here is all the available units in France of 1940. These are all the units that were possibly there. And uh, you can see that some are highlighted, some are not, meaning that they are buyable or not. Um, you have the names, the amount that you can purchase, the cost, um, how their size, basically how big on their, how much of a drain on your force size that you can have, how much they drain on that. And then uh, you have the number of points you have, basically the number of uh, what you can use to spend. That's your cash there. And then up here on this box here that's empty right now, these are the units you currently own. Right now I'd own nothing, and I have a maximum force size of 40. Uh, basically how that works is each individual soldier is a, has a value of 1. And so I could have 40 soldiers. Um, but uh, if you have vehicles, those have a value in of them themselves plus the crew, so those uh, take up more space. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kind of start off by buying uh, a couple things here. Uh, see, we got uh, you know motorcycles. Uh, starts off with like machine guns, cannons, um, trucks, armored cars. Then we got the light tanks and then medium tanks. As you can see, the, most of these are grayed out. Um, that's because of the rarity. Basically, DCG um, factors in real historic values on how many were in this conflict. And we have a, a value system assigned to that. So if something was very common, it'll say very common. And you can buy a whole lot of them. But if something was pretty rare, like the uh, Panzer IV off ste that you won't have many opportunities to buy that at this particular time. It just was not that common. It won't show up for you to buy and it won't show up for the enemy to use against you that often either. So I'm going to start with the Panzer II. So I've got selected here. Go ahead and click this button here to buy it. So now I have one in my forces here. And then I'm going to select a couple infantry squads. Uh, basically I like to have at least one squad with anti-tank capability. So this one's got AT rifle. Also has a machine gun. You can see full descriptions here. And I'm going to get another one that's the dedicated machine gun. 
Let's see, this one's got an MG34. It's pretty cheap, price of five, so I'll just pick that one up too. So I got a still quite a few points left, 49. Um, also, uh, we've got the uh, support here. We've got the uh, close air support. If you buy this, you can either you either have a BF109 or a JU87 uh, come and attack a ground that uh, or a spot on the ground that you select. And we also have off map artillery. Um, and what we did uh, that's new in the assault squad version of 4.0 DCG is we uh, kind of alter this a little bit to reflect the uniqueness of each nation's uh, artillery. Some nations were known for being more accurate or uh, quicker response time or had uh, bigger uh, bigger batteries, meaning more uh, guns firing. Uh, so we tried to add this in, uh, this information in, and uh, convert it in a way that still plays well with the game, but try and add some of that information in. It's not going to take like 10 minutes to call an artillery strike, but it'll it'll take, compared to the other nations, a similar amount of time, you know, 30, 45 seconds, something like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and buy that, and we see that here. So we'll test that out in this mission. One thing I haven't covered is these buttons right over here. Basically, if you select um, your squad here and hit reset all inventories, that clears out anything it might have been carrying, and when they load in the next mission, they'll be carrying their default gear, uh, whatever they typically spawn with, be it number of you know, grenades and bullets and weapons and all that stuff. When you reset everything, they'll come up with their default. Um, there's a reset all inventories that just resets all of them. And so you don't have to select each individual one and hit this button. You can just do all of them with one click. Uh, you can do view unit, unit t d view unit details. Can't talk. And uh, so I selected the Panzer II. And typically you would see, you could assign a name to it. You could give it, um, you could see how much fuel it's carrying. Right now it's saying minus one because it has not been loaded in a mission yet. So it uh, doesn't have the default value given yet. Um, you can select the paint scheme. This one has just one, uh, but if it had more, you'd be able to select a different one. And typically it would show its inventory, but again, it hasn't been loaded in a mission yet. So that will not show up till after the first mission. And you can also reset the uh, inventory too through this menu. Um, and then the other buttons are add empty squad. When I click that, it adds a blank squad with nothing in it. Uh, what's cool about this is you can right click on it and click add, and you can select individual soldiers and pretty much kind of make your own little squad there by doing this. Um, you can select an MG guy, uh, MG ammo, that's what loader means, he's carrying MG ammo. And then the dash one means it's a level one. Uh, it's basically the recruit level. They can level up to level four. And you can see the price associated with them. Uh, you can use these to fill out squads that have lost guys uh, by tank crew for tanks that have lost uh, parts of their crew. I'm going to buy a medic. This is one of the pretty much the only place you can buy a medic. And so uh, medics are added into the game because your soldiers can be revived. There's a chance of them that happening. They also call it carry extra uh, med packs, uh, bandages. That's the word I'm looking for. They carry extra bandages, and so they, you know, if you guys run out, there's extra ones there with the medic too. And the last thing is the disband button. Uh, if you have a unit that you want to get rid of, you no longer want, you want to make some room to buy something else, you can select it and hit disband. You get this here just to make sure you're. You wanted to do that, are you sure? And uh, it tells you how many points you'll get for selling whatever is there. Basically, because there was nothing, I'm not gonna get any points. If uh, you're selling infantry and small cannons and things like that, you're really not gonna get anything. Uh, most of the time, you'll get something if you wanna sell like a tank or something like that, you'll get a small percentage of the points based on its value. So yes, I'll just go ahead and get rid of that empty squad there because I don't need it. And so we've got our units, and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so we're on the operation screen. This is that four, one, two, three, four, by three, one, two, three, uh, operation that I selected. It's random. It's going to have random maps here. And what we're looking at 
are the maps that Germany owns. You can see the little flag is over them. The maps that the UK owns. You can see the UK divisions. There's one there, one there, one there. And there's the German divisions. There's a friendly AI one here. There's me right here. And then you got the front lines. And also we have our uh, supply maps with the little supply icon. This is mine. Here's the UK one. And to win the operation, I need to capture this map. And they have to win by capturing mine. So uh, as long as I'm not between the front lines and this map, I can always buy new units. If they were to happen to take, say, this division somehow took this map, I was stuck out here. Uh, I would be out of supply. I cannot buy any new units. So watch out for that. And now these little icons for the divisions actually do represent what type of units they can have. So you can have idea. You can have an idea of what they would spawn with by right-clicking on them. You can see here that these guys can have infantry, infantry, cannons, trucks, armored cars, but no light, medium, or heavy tanks. No. And you can do that again by right-clicking on the division, and it tells you what they possibly have. And so now I know, have an idea that this is probably the most heavily armed unit in the UK right now that I could fight against. So I probably do not want to attack him. Uh, now that I know that, I want to attack this map. And uh, so that way I've got a little bit of a buffer zone. They can't take my supply map. And I'm going to order my friendly unit to attack out here. See if we can take out. Uh, two maps on one turn. And basically I have eight days to complete the objective which is capture this map. Each mission takes one day. And also kinda cool little thing you may not know is you can take your guy, take your unit and drag, you don't have to drag to a uh, bordering map, you can drag across to a different map. And you'll get an infiltration mission. These are special missions with special objectives, typically played on night. And uh, they just take your infantry. Only your infantry squads can sneak through lines. And uh, you'll play unique ones like capture a truck or kill a, an officer, things like that. And then that will demoralize the enemy in one way or another so they can't attack the next uh, day or something like that. They'll be bonus rewards or you know, there will be no airstrikes for a couple of days, things like that. So you can always do that to break up uh, the usual types of missions that you get when you typically just attack another unit. Uh, so this is, I'm happy with this turn right here. This is what I want to do. I want to take that map. I want to have him attack that map. Now he's got a question mark, meaning we don't know what he's doing. He could be resupplying either one of these, backing up as reinforcements. So it could be possible, even though this is only infantry and cannons, if he resupplies, unit three resupplies the second, um, backs him up, if he backs him up, I'll see some other vehicles in there. So that's what that little question mark means in case you're wondering. He could possibly help out one of these two divisions in the next fight. So I'm gonna go ahead and click done. And by the way, if you ever need any help, there's the F1 button right down here in the bottom right hand corner. Click on that and you'll see documentation about everything we've been talking about. Okay, so this is the uh, deployment screen where um, you basically choose your units and uh, pick where they're going to spawn. You can move them around. So I'm going to move them anywhere inside of this blue box. This is your deployment zone. Um, each side will have one. And so I'm going to put my Panzer II right here at this crossroads. Uh, my infantry, I'm just going to kind of put close by. I know this particular map is from a single player uh, men of war mission, and it is very uh, crowded and rocky mountainous. It is a difficult map for uh, playing on. I know it's really small, so I'm going to kind of keep my guys together. Now, the thing that you can do is you can uncheck these, and basically what that does is means your guys won't be there when the mission starts. You can still select where they'll be, and you can call them in through the reinforcements tab. 
Uh, so if you did not want to have your Panzer II start right there, but you just want to have one squad start at the beginning, um, just to kind of scout it out, make sure it's safe, and then bring in your Panzer II, you can do that by unchecking them, and uh, and then you'll be able to call them in through the Reinforcements tab. But I'm pretty confident with, uh, with my guys, so I'm going to leave them all checked on, and we'll start the mission from here. And this kind of tells you what's happening. Uh, basically, uh, your mission is to take these points here, and intelligent reports indicate that in response to your activity, the enemy has committed elements of the third. Oh crap, the third is that uh, division that could have tanks. So basically, they've come to help out. So um, I might be glad that I bought all this artillery support to take out some tanks. Who knows what they have? They might have something heavy that a Panzer II can't deal with. So we'll see, but it does tell you ahead of time, if you're paying attention, what could be happening. And I need to hold these points for 120 seconds, basically two minutes. I need to hold both objectives. So I'm going to go ahead and click Done. Ta-da! Okay, so my first mission has been created. Now you do not want to close this. Do not click on that little red button. Leave this running because you're going to need this open when you finish that mission. Uh, basically you will uh, save the game. This needs to be left running so DCG can see that you save the game and are finished with your mission. So leave this running. This concludes this video. Uh, the next video I'll go ahead and play out that mission. I'll show you how to save the game and repeat so you can do multiple missions back to back. Thank you.